Um, my name is Aubrey Schick. I'm from Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm here with the Romibo Robot Project for Origami Robotics. Um, the Romibo Robot Project is a social robot that is being developed um, as a platform for social therapy research. Um, we initially started developing for therapies with children with autism and uh, moving into working with older adults with dementia. Um, robot therapy has been in the works at, at least since the early 90s, but most of the robots have been cost prohibitive, uh, 16 to $30,000. These robots can be built for under $600, um, and we're, we're distributing them as research platforms. And these kids here are driving it. You can see the iPad app. Um, the robots can be used to teach uh, preschool skills to help with uh, social therapies, um, such as uh, to help with storytelling, emotional expression, facilitating engagement. Um, the robot has all of the different capabilities that have been recommended in the leading research. However, it's, it's a much, much lower cost, so we're currently trying to get researchers around the world to use them. Okay, so hi, my name is Courtney Yee, and I go to Woodland School in fourth grade, and we are at the Stanford Block Party. So this is the robot Thymio, and my teacher, Ms. Marzouk, is my technology teacher, and she taught me how to program this robot. So it has five sensors in the front, two sensors in the back, and two sensors on the bottom. So here is the word programming, if you want to program this robot. And there's also a picture programming, so you can use the pictures to program the robot, too. And so what I created was this baby grand piano. And so there, you can use the five sensors, and I recorded my own voice. So if you press the sensor, then it will play a note. And then since there are not enough sensors to play the whole scale, then you can program two sensors to play another note. And so you can also build Legos on the robot. So if you want to build up, then you can use the Legos. And here are the buttons that you can use to control the robot. How hard was it to program your robot? It's not very hard if you use the picture programming. And so then it's used for little kids where you can drag a photo over to a little block and then you can have the, uh, the robot do what you want it to do. So how, do, how would other kids get involved with these robots? So the kids can program the robots and show it off at events like these, like the Maker's Fair or the Stanford Block Party. And so it gives children a really good chance to program robots and learn about the robots. Button Dolly is a San Francisco-based company. Um, our, our big idea is that we are co-opting industrial technologies for creative use. Um, so a big part of that is um, redesigning the way that you would handle robotic motion programming and robotic motion control. So um, we got our sort of big start in the entertainment world. We did some movies with um, Hollywood films with Warner Brothers. Um, one's called Gravity. Okay, so we're, we're looking at, um, this is a demonstration that we call Stick Stack. So it's a proof of concept for massively customizable manufacturing. Um, essentially, we've written a plugin that runs on top of Rhinoceros. It's a 3D modeling program that's you know, well used in the industrial design and architectural design worlds. And it allows you to basically link parametric design and procedural design, data-driven design with robotic fabrication. Um, and this enables you to build incredibly complex structures incredibly precisely.
So what we're showing here is we're showing an example of um, stacking up a stick wall. So you can define some parameters such as the curviness of the wall, the length, the width, the height, the material type, the um, dimensional properties of your material, and basically hit print to robot and print out your wall or your coffee table or your bookshelf straight out and have a fully assembled you know, piece of furniture at the end. So that's, that's what this particular demonstration is about. Um, but so how, how does this relate to what Bot and Dolly does? Well, we like to say that um, we make things move. That's, that's what we do. So we started in the entertainment world. We worked on a motion picture called Gravity uh, for Warner Brothers. It should be coming out pretty soon. And, um, we designed a plugin called BD Move for Maya that allows anyone who can animate a animated character to come in and animate an entire robotic set. So for that movie, that movie that takes place in outer space, um, and our approach was instead of turning off gravity, why don't we just roll the world? So we had control over exact locations of where the lights were, where the cameras were, set pieces, and all the actors, and we could coordinate their motion to give it the simulation of um, anti-gravity effects, the appearance of a zero-gravity situation without actually having to be in a zero-gravity environment. So we're at the Stanford block party, robot block party. Um, I'm David, I'm here with a company called Barobo. Uh, we make educational modular robots. So this is our, our flagship product here. Um, this is our modular robot, so they're able to connect together to form bigger robots from individual modules. Um, but right now what we have is a little demo. It's, a, um, it's showing off the accelerometer and the motor controllers. So let's just fire this up real fast. Okay, so what we have here is a little demo. Um, what we have is, uh, this is a master module and it's sensing its orientation relative to ground, like it's uh, using an accelerometer. And it's using its uh, tilt to control the motors on this one. So if you tilt it forward, the motors turn forward, tilt it back, motor turn back, and you can also go sideways. And so this way you can use the module to control. And what we also have is a second mode. So if you press the B button, it goes into motor following mode. So now if you, if you turn the wheel, the other module follows the, the, uh, the motion one to one. And it, uh, we have encoders on both motors. It has about a third of a degree accuracy. So it's, it's uh, yep. Um, we've also got an I squared C interface so you can plug in uh, external sensors. You can have range finders. Uh, we're also gonna come out with a breadboard so you can design your own sensors and just build your own sensors and attach it right in there. Who is this robot designed for? Ah, okay. This robot was designed for uh, K through 12 students. So we've actually worked with schools um, on uh, the precursor. So the precursor to this is, is that guy right there. And we've actually worked with teachers from middle and high school uh, to develop curriculum for math and programming classes. We also have a, a really in easy programming interface. So, so this demo right here is just to kind of you know, play, it's, it's a fun toy, but we actually also have a very intuitive and a very easy uh, programming interface uh, that supports multiple languages that you can use to program the robots to do whatever you want, basically. How expensive are they? Uh, we have got a, we've got a Kickstarter coming up in the middle of next month. We're gonna be selling these for 139, I believe, on the Kickstarter. And after that, the retail will be 179.95 type of deal. Great, thank you. Yeah. I'm Corey Kidd, the founder and CEO of Intuitive Automata, and this is Autumn, our weight loss coach. So Autumn has a daily conversation uh, with me about eating, exercise, and weight, and gives me customized feedback and advice. So she speaks aloud. Let's see if we can uh, listen to her here. I get a little confused sometimes about where I'm supposed to look, so forgive me if I do something strange. Is there something specific you'd like to discuss before you tell me about your day? So she'll have a short conversation with me. She'll ask about uh, you know what, how well I've eaten, uh, how much exercise I've gotten, 
uh, my weight, and I can also integrate other devices. So for example, the Fitbit in my pocket uh, can tell her automatically how many steps I've taken, my wireless bathroom scale, uh, and then she has a short conversation, so three or four minutes uh, after she gets that information will give me some feedback and advice on you know, what I can do to be healthier. And no two conversations are alike. So she's actually learning about me over time. So every time I touch a button on the screen to respond to her, she's deciding what to say next. So she actually adapts to each person over time. So the more she learns about me, uh, understands what my goals are, she'll be able to better adapt her advice to me. So Autumn is in pre-sales right now. Uh, we're starting manufacturing in the next few months and we'll be shipping the first robots uh, middle of this year. So what makes Autumn better than like a book or an app? So the, the focus of Autumn and you know, the reason that we're doing this on an interactive robot is that she's more engaging than doing the same thing on an app. You know, so I can run an app on my iPhone that might help me keep track of the same thing that Autumn does. But the fact that she looks at me, the fact that she's physically here sharing space with me, all make a psychological difference in how I perceive her. And you know, what that translates into is the ability for her to engage me over an extended period of time. The big challenge with dieting or really any sort of behavior change is how I do it, you know, not for the first few days or the first few weeks, but a month, two months, six months, a year into it. And that's really what Autumn excels at, is in helping me stick with something over a long period of time. What we are doing in uh, Robots Lab, we are basically creating a product for teachers uh, to explain all kinds of abstract concepts in maths and science uh, to students. Things like quadratic equations and sine and cosine and you know, relative velocity, things that are really abstract and really students are really struggling to understand. And uh, we've created a product, this is called Robots Lab Box. Uh, it's basically a box which is packed with uh, four different robotics platforms. Uh, we have a robotic arm that we, are, uh, we created. We have a, a Mobot, uh, the guy with the mustache that uh, students really, really love. Uh, we have the air drone, commercially available quadcopter, and the Sphero, which I don't have to demonstrate here because it's uh, rolling over, and a tablet. Now, everything um, that the teachers need is basically uh, running from this tablet. And they have different uh, topics that uh, they can choose, they can select from. Um, and let's say, um, as a teacher, let's say that uh, you, know, you have students that are asking you, why the hell do I need to learn quadratic equations? I'll never use it in my life, right? Everyone asks this question, even I did. And let's say that you are this teacher and you want to help your students to actually understand this concept. So what we are doing is basically, um, these are all the lessons that are available in Algebra 1. Quadratic equations are part of Algebra 1 lessons. So let's uh, choose really quickly a uh, quadratic equations lesson. And in this lesson, what we are doing, we are basically uh, demonstrating the quadratic equations using the quadcopter, the air drone. And the way that we are doing it is uh, the following. We are basically explaining them the relationship between the height of the quadcopter and the image size that its bottom camera can capture. The higher the quadcopter, the larger the area that uh, its bottom camera can capture. And for the teacher, the only thing that they need to do is basically uh, slide their finger on this uh, slider and basically the students can see that. I'm not connected right now, but the quadcopter takes off. And the important thing is that they can actually see the real data as it's coming from the sensors and the actual equation as, you know, as the quadcopter goes up and down. No. And this product is basically helping the students to bridge the uh, abstract world of algebra uh, into the concrete world where they can see and feel and interact with different, um, you know, with different kind of uh, uh, physical objects like robots. And I want to demonstrate one really quickly, uh, one lesson using this, uh, uh, this robot, the, the Mobot. So what we are doing is basically using this uh, controller, uh, the teacher can actually control the speed, the velocity of each one of the, of the uh, wheels. So let's say we take one of the wheels all the way um, um, to the maximum speed in one direction and the other wheel maximum speed on the opposite direction. What will happen is that the top, if I'm trying to look at that, so the absolute speed is actually zero. Why? Because they are both balancing each other. They are contradicting each other. That's 
that's the thing. That's where the students can actually see this kind of um, of uh, concept coming to life. Uh, we launched it a month and a half ago. Uh, so far, we've got uh, amazing feedback from teachers. Uh, we are working with uh, uh, 14 different teachers that help us to create all these lessons. Uh, we have 26 schools that are already purchased that, and uh, you know many others will be uh, will get their their uh, products very soon. And that's that. This is what we are doing.